Hi guys, this is a lesson that's meant to help you uh, as you work through um, reading and reflecting on the details in House on Mango Street. So I'm providing you this lesson for the first chapter on House on Mango Street. So if you're confused or you need extra help on how to go about doing that assignment, this is your starting point. Now, of course, if you watch this video and you're still having trouble with how to complete the work, then that's when you should probably come to me and say, hey, Mr. Lassard, I'm still unclear on this or that, or maybe you want feedback, and that's great. Come to me for feedback. But this should be your starting point for how to read, uh, select details from, and then write about or reflect on those details from the book House on Mango Street. So what I'll do in this lesson is I will read the first chapter with you um, and I'll select some details and I'll do a reflection on it. I do expect that the work that you do is your own. So while you may choose similar details from me for chapter one, if you uh, or you may not even do chapter one, you might select a different chapter to do. But if you do, decide to do chapter one and select different details or uh, similar details from me, that your reflection should be your own. So let's get started. First of all, let's remember what we need to do while we are uh, completing this. There are essentially three steps, but I've broken them down into four here. Uh, the, first, um, the first thing is, you need to read the group of vignettes. So remember that we, uh, in OneNote, have that page that has the instructions that lists off, this is what you do when you read and this all that, all that stuff. Uh, and then below it, there's like a, a worksheet area. Um, and on the worksheet area, you'll see that the, the vignettes have been grouped into fours. So you can always go back to OneNote and see what the group of vignettes are. It'll list off the title of each vignette or each short chapter. Remember, we're using the word vignette, um, and there's a definition of that, of that term on the instructions. But essentially, a vignette is a short chapter. Uh, so you can go back to the assignment sheet in OneNote, and you'll be able to see the groupings of vignettes. The second thing that you'll need to do once you've read that group of vignettes is you'll need to select the, the one of those four uh, vignettes that you want to focus on for that group. Uh, and you'll highlight it in OneNote um, on your, um, on your, uh, in your OneNote. Um, pick Pick the one that was most interesting to you or the one that had the most creative details. So hopefully within those four chapters, there will be at least one that sticks out to you uh, that, um, that you kind of are a little bit more interested in writing about or you thought the details were a little bit, they popped out a little bit more to you or something uh, than the other ones. So you're not having to do this, you know, for every single chapter because some of the chapters or some of the vignettes may not be quite as engaging as, as other ones to you. The third thing that you'll do is you'll record the telling details uh, from, or you'll record three telling details from the, the vignette that you've selected into your OneNote worksheet. Um, and you'll you'll type those in. We'll go over how to do that. And then the fourth thing, the last thing that you'll do is that you will reflect on those details using at least two of the guiding questions that are listed in the OneNote kind of worksheet that I was talking about earlier. So like I said, on this slideshow, in this lesson, I've broken it down into four steps. On the on the assignment sheet, I think it's steps two and three are combined into 
into one, so it's only three steps, but I'm not saying anything new. I'm just saying it slightly differently here. So that's what we need to do. And uh, like I said, I will do that with, I'll go through that process one time with you so that you can kind of see how to do it. So let's start with reading. We're just going to read the first vignette here. Um, and just FYI, if it interests you, you, and if you're reading electronically, now if you're using your library book, you can't do this, if the one that's been checked out by the librarian. But if you're using the electronic book, then you can highlight in your copy of the book. OneNote has a highlight option, so you can use that to highlight your electronic copy of the book as you come across interesting details, then you'll be able to you know, highlight them and go back to them. So that's an option for some of you if you want to do that. Um, what I'll do here is I will just underline certain details so you can see I've underlined a detail already there. But let's read this page. So it's, this is the first vignette in the book, The House on Mango Street, and the title of the vignette is The House on Mango Street. We didn't always live on Mango Street. Before that, we lived on Loomis on the third floor. Before that, we lived on Keeler. Before Keeler, it was Paulina. And before that, I can't remember. But what I remember most is moving a lot. Each time, it seemed there'd be one more of us. By the time we got to Mango Street, we were six. Mama, Papa, Carlos, Kiki, my sister, Nenny, and me. The house on Mango Street is ours. And we don't have to pay rent to anybody or share the yard with the people downstairs or be careful not to make too much noise and there isn't a landlord banging on the ceiling with a broom but even so it's not the house we thought we'd get now you can see before i go on to the next page that i've underlined one detail that i thought was was interesting a landlord banging on the ceiling with a broom and i underlined it just because it helps me like it gives me a sense of where she comes from and I can, you know, hear, you know, hear that, you know, that, that thumping from the landlord and all of that. I thought it was an interesting detail. We go on. We had to leave the flat on Loomis quick. The water pipes broke and the landlord wouldn't fix them because the house was too old. We had to leave fast. We were using the washroom next door and carrying water over in em em empty milk gallons. That's why Mama and Papa t looked for the house, and that's why we moved into the house on Mango Street, far away on the other side of town. They always told us, excuse me, they always told us that one day we would move into a house, a real house, that would be ours for always, so we wouldn't have to move each year. And our house would have running water and pipes that worked, and inside it would have real stairs. Not hallway stairs, but stairs inside like the houses on TV. And we'd have a basement and at least three washrooms, so when we took a bath, we wouldn't have to tell everybody. Our house would be white with trees around it. A great big yard and grass growing with a fence. This was the house Papa talked about when he held a lottery ticket. And this was the house Mama dreamed up in the stories she told us before we went to bed. But the house on Mango Street is not the way they told it at all. It's small and red with tight steps in front and windows so small you'd think they were holding their breath. I'm going to stop there because that's another one of the details that I've selected. Windows so small you'd think they were holding their breath. Just kind of like that one. So I've highlighted or I've underlined it to remember for when I go back for the work later. Bricks are crumbling in places, and the front door is so swollen you have to push hard to get in. There's no front yard, only four little elms in, that the city planted by the curb. Out back is a large garage for the car we don't own, uh, we don't own yet, and a small yard that looks similar between the two buildings on either side. There are stairs in our house, but they're ordinary hallway stairs, and the house has only one washroom. Everybody has to share a bedroom. Mama and Papa, 
Carlos and Kiki, me and Nenny. Once when we were living on Loomis, a nun from my school passed by and saw me playing out front. The laundromat downstairs had been boarded up because it had been robbed two days before and the owner had painted on the wood, yes, we're open, so as not to lose business. Where do you live? she asked. There, I said, pointing up to the third floor. You live there? There. I had to look to where she pointed. The third floor, the paint peeling, wooden bars Papa had nailed on the windows so we wouldn't fall out. You live there? The way she said it made me feel like nothing. There. I live there. I nodded. I knew then I had to have a house. A real house. One I could point to. But this isn't it. The house on Mango Street isn't it. For the time being, Mama says. Temporary, says Papa. But I know how those things go. And I have one more detail that I've underlined here before the end of the chapter, and that's this one. It's a little bit longer. It's this exchange between the nun and uh, and the the little girl who's telling the story. Uh, this line, you live there? And then it goes on. <clears throat> so now that I've read the chapter or the vignette, and I've underlined or highlighted a few of the details, what I want to do is I want to show you what your reflection might look like. So let's just pretend, I know we haven't, but let's pretend that we've read that first set of vignettes. The House on Mango Street, Hairs, Boys and Girls, and My Name. We've read them, we've found details, we've looked for the details, and I've decided that that first chapter is the one that I want to do my reflection on for that group. So what I'll do is in my OneNote, I will highlight, or in this case, I put a box around because I don't have a highlighter in PowerPoint, but I'll highlight that and say, this is the chapter that I want to work on. Now, fortunately, while I was reading, I was already keeping track of my, um, of my detail, of the details that were sticking out to me, those telling details, the ones that really kind of showed me what it, um, you know, st stuck out to me as, as being uh, exceptional. And so uh, what, I, what I'll do is I'll move over to the next book. This is again, this is in our OneNote. So the, the, it, uh, the, next, the next column in our OneNote uh, worksheet. And I will record those details. So that might look something like this. So you'll see in the worksheet that there's a place for you to write down detail one, detail two, detail three. And I've gone and I've typed back. I've gone back to the book and I've typed in the details that I found. So a couple things to notice here. First of all, two of the details were not complete sentences. And so what I did was I put what's called the, in you know most of us just say dot 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 you know and that means we've we've left something out of the quote it's called an ellipsis so because i start here in detail one in the middle of the sentence um i put an ellipsis before a landlord banging on the ceiling with a broom and that was the detail that i underlined uh on page four you'll see that i put in parenthesis four because it comes from page four Detail two, I've done the same thing. Windows so small, you'd think they were holding their breath. Uh, I've got the ellipsis there at the beginning, and I've got the uh, page number five in parenthesis at the end. And then the third one is actually three, four, one, two, three, four, actually, I guess five different sentences. So I don't have the ellipsis, but I do make sure to copy all of the, uh, the um, punctuation correctly. So when the nun says, you live there, uh, I've included the italics. Um, I've got the question mark. The way she said it made me feel like nothing, period. There, again in italics, I live there, italics again. And then I nodded, making sure that I got that all correct. And then I've cited page six there at the end. So that's what you'll do 
uh, in your own work, you need to make sure you're, you're carefully putting those details in there. The last thing that we want to do is the reflection. And for the reflection, we should answer two of the four questions that are available. So those four questions are on the assignment sheet and you can pick them, but you should do a variety of the questions each time you stop to reflect. <clears throat> so you should um, not do the same two questions each time. In this case, I've listed all four questions for convenience on this lesson, but I'm telling you that I chose question one and question three. So the question one is, how do the author's words create an emotion or image for you? And what I've done is I've looked back at the details and I've answered question one in two complete sentences, although those of you who are looking to do a bit more might choose to do a bit more than that. And I've written phrases have lots of sensory details that make me feel like I'm cramped and stressed out. So I can look back at these details, the, you know, stressed and cramped, uh, you know, the ceiling, the, the banging on the ceiling with the broom, the windows holding their breaths, the, the nun kind of judging her for where she lives. That's all kind of the cramped feeling and the stressed out. So I wrote further the noise and sensation of holding my breath, the shame of not of not living in a desirable place by the emphasis of there, bring out those emotions for me. So that's all I really need to do. I could go on and say more, especially if I wanted to show exceptional learning, but that's what I need to do. I also decided to answer question number three, which is what makes these details creative and original. Uh, and so <clears throat> for question number three, I wrote, the detail about the windows holding their breath is especially creative and original because windows can't do that. At the same time, by describing them that way, it makes me feel almost tight in my chest. I understand that this isn't a stress-free situation. So I'm just, in my own words, answering the question. Is that the right answer? No. Is it a wrong answer? No. But it is an answer that makes sense. And that's all I'm looking for here. And you'll repeat this, uh, this process uh, for each group of four vignettes. Now again, this is the minimum work. I would accept this work as you showed that you understand what to do. However, if you are trying to, uh, to show that you are more capable, then you'll do more. Uh, you may include additional details, uh, or you may answer additional reflection questions, or you may go into additional detail when answering those reflection questions. So this is an example of what I would expect everybody should be capable of doing by the time we're done with the book. However, for those of you who are looking to show more than that, from time to time, you'll do more than that. All right, if you have additional questions, you can always ask me through email, uh, or I'd be happy to Zoom with you. So have a good day.